great. I am ready. Ms. Slater. I'm ready. Perfect. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is George Saris. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. This is Pete Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I now I now Aaron call the order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, April fourteenth, twenty twenty. In accordance with the mandated direction of the state superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non essential personnel through April twenty fourth, twenty twenty, in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda. Barbara Burnop? Yes. Mary McC Boswell McComas? Yes, present. William Burke? Present. Christina Byers? Present. Michael Dickerson? Present. Raquel Jones? Present. Maria Lowry? Maria Lowry. George Roberts. Present. Brian Scriven. Present. Monique Wheatley Phillips. Monique Wheatley Phillips. Michael Zarchin. Michael Zarchin. Margaret Ann Howie. Here. George Sarah. Here. Pete Dixit. Present. James Corn. Present. Megan Shea. Present. Charles Patillo. Present. Jess Grimm. Present. Michael Groff. Present. Meryl Plate. Present. 
If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Yes, Andy Nussbaum. Daryl Williams. So noted. Thank you, Ms. Slade. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to present contracts one through 13. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is George Saris. The first item on our agenda is JLE 614-20, Bridges in Mathematics, the Math Learning Center. This is a new contract for a revised mathematics program in elementary schools as recommended by the curriculum review by Johns Hopkins University to the Department of Academics. This program will supply student books, teacher guides, and appropriate supplies to implement the program. Services such as professional learning may be part of the purchase. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $9,047,628. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Board members, are there questions? No. No, thank you. Okay, I have one question. Um, what are the anticipated expenditures in year one of this contract? So uh, this is George Saris. For the uh, for the first year, uh, we are hoping to implement grades three through five at a cost of two point seven million dollars. Okay. You said two point seven. Correct. Thank you. So the, the line item in the budget that indicates K through five math materials that are being purchased for six million, that <clears throat> includes materials in addition to the bridges materials in this contract? No, that was the proposal. And uh, in working with Baltimore County government, and as you may have heard this morning, um, there were uh, the, the Budget proposal in full was not funded. In fact, uh, the $2.7 million for this uh, purchase we have included with our FY20 BAT because uh, essentially no textbook money other than our baseline of about $900,000 was available uh, for FY21. So, uh, so this, along with our uh, second stage of the open court implementation, we have included in the bat with county government's understanding. And so, none. There is the six million dollars um, for next year will not materialize. Two point seven of that for this specific material. Uh, will be uh, spent this year, hopefully. Okay. So the K through two will not materialize because it is not funded for next year. That was the That's remainder. That's my understanding, unless um, Dr. Boswell McComas uh, or Ms. Shea have more recent information than I. Good afternoon. I would just, this is, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead Megan. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, good George. Um, I just wanted to um, just reiterate, as George indicated, we know uh, because of uh, tight budget um, forecast that we are working to um, identify how to do a multi-year uh, rollout um, just as we did with open court and so that you know we're trying to work within the resources that we have but the continuing vision is to ultimately um, change over our k 
to five math program to the bridges materials. Mm -hmm. And at that, I'll defer over to um, Ms. Shea. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McComas. Good afternoon, everyone. I was just going to echo what you said. Um, we, throughout this last few months, as the budget process continues to unfold, we have made several different contingency plans. Our commitment over um, the five years outlined in the contract is to have it in place in K through five. Um, we'll go as quickly as we can based on funding resources, but as slow as we must to be responsible. But to um, just to clarify, it is not that we intend to spend money on any other programs. We are fully committed to this program. It's just a matter of um, the speed at which the resources allocated allow us to implement it in a way that makes sense for um, students and for teachers. Great, thank you. That's very helpful. Board members, are there any additional questions? Are there follow-up? I just or... have one. Yes, Ms. Rowe? Um, I would like to know, uh, we've heard the state superintendent talk about um, doing possible distance learning in the fall, and I wanted to know if this Bridges program can be implemented in that way, and if we're looking at how to do that. Hi, this is Mrs. Shea again. Thank you, Ms. Rowe, for that question. So as you know, um, we are fully immersed in our continuity of learning plan right now, and we do have 13 schools that are currently field testing with the Bridges materials. Um, so as part of our work for the continuity of learning plan that we have implemented and are continuing to implement currently, we are working with the Bridges materials. So um, part of that includes developing both print and digital pathways, depending on the grade level and the access to technology, as well as the embedded professional learning. Um, the additional ask would be then if we were to extend professional learning to other grade levels in a remote environment, we would just continue to build upon the professional learning that we use to help um, gear all of our teachers up for this um, continuity of learning plan to try to extend that through bridges. So the materials themselves are not digital, um, but we are working through that currently um, with those 13 field test schools. Um, and actually just this morning had a meeting with the principals of those field test schools and they were very excited um, by the resources that we've already developed and that the Math Learning Center, the publisher of Bridges, have developed to support all schools um, working in a remote learning environment. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Mr. McBellion, did you have any no, additional no, questions? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. The next item uh, that I have is JBO 714-18, Court Reporting Services. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for continued court reporting services for the Office of Law. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $120,000 bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $195,000 with the two uh, awarded vendors approved by the board in April 2018. Okay, board members, questions? No, thank you. Hearing none. Yes, okay. we have one. Um, Ms. Does this does this include the Board of Education's um, recording of things too, like when we have hearings and things? Yes, Ms. Rowe, this, is Ms. this is Ms. Howie. The, the reason for the increase is that not only uh, does the contract include what Mr. Saris just described, the board's hearings, but it also includes what is now the superintendent's responsibility as of April 2019 under policy 8222, which are the board's meetings itself, or okay, themselves, I rather. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That also answered my question as well, so I am good. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item is JMI 611-16, Land Mobile Radio Systems and Associated Equipment. This is a contract modification to provide for the installation 
of a two-way digital radio tracking and command system for the Office of Network Support Services and Transportation. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2.5 million, bringing revised total contract spending authority to $7,080,000, with six awarded vendors approved by the board in February 2016. Do we know the, the estimated project completion date for the system? Um, Mr. Corns, would you have that information? Ms. Hen, we're um, hoping to begin this project um, um, this school year and move it through to um, probably take um, into the early part of uh, the FY 2021 school year. So could, could you speak to that in, in a little more detail? Does that mean, tell me what that looks like in terms of. So the, the primary effort in this is, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, please continue. Oh, so the primary effort uh, involved in this is uh, the initial out, um, the initial implementation is to begin the work through the FCC licensure process, um, then moving into uh, installation of radios into uh, our physical buses, um, which uh, that's the bulk of the work, uh, given the, the sheer number of buses that we would have. Uh, but the beginning part of this uh, task is revolving around uh, starting the FCC licensure, paying those fees, and then um, um, making sure that our site towers and rentals are in place. With the ultimate goal of being able to track all of our buses. So is that, that is a, that is a, um, there, there are two uh, outcomes that we are hoping. Our primary outcome is the ability to communicate in a two-way fashion with our buses that um, is um, legal uh, as far as not using cell phones while drivers are driving, uh, being able to have that uh, two-way communication back to our dispatchers, as well as uh, being able to um, segregate traffic so that uh, buses could talk to their lots without having an abundance of overtalk, thus the digital system. And the secondary aspect of this ta um, function has uh, GPS units that are built into the radios that would provide us with um, an, a second way to uh, pinpoint individual buses uh, upon their routes. Okay, so both, both phases of, of that are both end goals. You're saying we'll be live in all buses by by what date? Um, Ms. Ann, we're, we're we're aiming we're aiming for um, I, I want to I want to be as uh, careful as possible without uh, without giving a, a, a hard date. But we're we're sure. saying by December of 2020, all buses outfitted. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Board members, other, thank you. Board members, other questions? Yes. No, thank you. I have a question. Ms. Rowe? Is there any expectation that the FCC licensing process could be held up by the COVID-19 pandemic? Ms. Rowe, I, I would say we don't expect any, but um, and, until until we actually get a full engagement with, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to rule it out, but we're not in expectations there would be. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Mr. Corns. Okay, the uh, this is George Saris again. The next item we have is JMI six three one dash one seven, information technology hardware. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase and lease to own of information technology, hardware, and software for the system, including the Departments of Facilities Management, Information Technology, School Safety, uh, the Office of Career and Technology Education, and Fine Arts, and others. Approval is requested 
to increase contract spending authority to $41,178, excuse me, $41,178,737 with 39 awarded vendors approved by the board in June 2017. Board members, questions? No, thank you. Ms. Rowe? Sorry, I keep forgetting to hit that mute button. Um, I have one. Is is anything in this contract funding related to um, expansion of networks because we're doing distance learning, or were our systems already capable of handling that? Um, Ms. Rowe, we... Yeah, go ahead. We Jim. have, I'm sorry, George. We have not had to expand our network presence in order to facilitate our distance learning. Um, the, uh, the the contract this uh, that w this would put in place or uh, expand it would not be needed. We don't need to expand anything. We've got. We were ready for this. Okay. So this is all things related to our capital projects then, and what you would consider to be routine network upgrades? Routine network upgrades and maintenance, as as well as, as you said, capital projects, putting in uh, uh, network switching gear and wireless units into new schools. Okay. Do you happen to know, um, with the funding source, how much of the amount is operating budget versus capital budget? Uh, let me see if I have that. It, it mentions, I believe, that 2% Oh, I see, 2.8. Okay, I see it here. Sorry. That's it. Thank you. And I, I had a similar question I wanted to ask in terms of the network upgrades. If we are moving toward a more seamless user experience for our students moving from the classroom to their home experience with regards to improving that experience. I know students have had difficulties with their devices at home, and if that's an environment that, I mean, given our recent um, experience or needs, that are we moving with, with these upgrades towards improving that experience, and will any of these upgrades help? Listen, the, um, the experience that we're, we're focusing in on heavily now is uh, making sure that our uh, on-network and off-network off experience when it comes to student um, uh, filtering is, um, is seamless. And so we are moving to a, um, a light speed uh, solution that is going to um, be able to be implemented that will give a more seamless uh, impact. Uh, uh, experience for that. Um, we've also been looking into um, some, uh, one of our, um, I don't want to say lessons learned, but things that would have been of a great benefit is a greater presence in uh, our parking lots for wireless conductivity. Um, so the, these vendors that are on here would be able to uh, provide us with a lot of those resources. I don't know if that, does, it, does that help? Somewhat, and, and that, that does touch on um, the issues that I'm speaking of with regards to light speed and um, making for a friendlier environment for that, that transition, particularly, because that's where students seem to be having the most difficulty and where our support needs seem to be. So, yes, to a degree, if, if that's where we, we are beefing up um, our infrastructure to be able to support both. Um, both environments to be able to support students at home. Yeah. The um, the environment we're, we're we're speaking about is our mobile agent, which is uh, a shift over to um, a, a a different platform from the current Lightspeed agent that requires individuals to come back to us. Um, where where instead there's a cloud presence that's more seamless mm -hmm. and more mirrored. Mm -hmm. So it would directly address what you're speaking about. Great. And 
Sorry, I had a second question that's escaping me now. Oh, with regards to our capital projects and the build out of new schools, can you speak to that model for new schools and any changes that are being implemented um, as opposed to how we're currently structured in terms of what those needs are? So for um, the 425000 for the new Northeast Elementary School, what does that look like in that school, and how is that model different? What are you, how has that evolved, in other words? Um, and specifically, I'm thinking of an on-premise hosting versus cloud model for our um, infrastructure needs moving forward. So the the infrastructure presence that would be in the school, we've we've worked diligently to um, move to a wireless environment, which has uh, lowered the expectation for uh, Ethernet switch ports. Um, there still it will always be an on-site server uh, component that's required simply for um, basic network, network functioning, but we are uh, moving to much less storage on-site. Um, our current uh, move around the wireless infrastructure is there has been a new um, wireless standard released that uh, the access points that are going into these buildings will take advantage of, which is a faster um, uh, uh, transaction speed with each client. Um, but we're, we've really pared down to the idea that uh, cloud storage is the direction we're going particularly in our elementary schools because of our Chromebook utilization, which does not take advantage of any local storage resource. Sure. Okay. Thank you. The next item. Well, Steve, oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Nope. I think we're ready to move on. Okay. Pardon me. The uh, next item I have, CWA 112-20. This is purchase of various <laughs> motor vehicles. Uh, this is a new competitively bid contract for the purpose of ver uh, purchase of various motor vehicles for the offices of transportation and food and nutrition services and the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with seven recommended bidders and contract spending authority of three million two hundred thousand seven hundred eleven dollars. <throat> Questions, board members? No, thank you. Hearing none. Okay. And I'll Thanks just mention uh, that at the next meeting uh, we will be bringing uh, the financing resolution that uh, we always do. Uh, each right. spring to go along with this purchase because most of of this uh, purchase uh, is is a lease purchase on a five year term with uh, okay. Bank of America and we need uh, both county government's endorsement for the debt and the board's approval for the financing so that'll come at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is ARA 216-19, Wireless Services. This contract modification will to continue to provide staff mobile devices and a service plan for the Department of Facilities Management and Information Technology. Approval is requested to extend the contract for three years, one month, and increase contract spending authority by $340,000 bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $440,000 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in March 2019. Questions? Okay, hearing none. Next item. Thank you. The next item, uh, KSH 340-18, fire alarm systems installations, repairs, parts, inspections, and preventive maintenance. This contract modification will provide for the continued fire alarm systems installations, repairs, parts, inspections, 
and or preventive maintenance for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3.5 million, with five awarded vendors approved by the board in December 2017. Board members, questions? I noticed that um, the funding source also is, is operating in capital budget, so this supports future capital projects as well. Is that correct? Uh, That's correct. Yes. Okay. I didn't see those those broken out. That's why I wanted to confirm that. Yes, I'm looking to see if I have that in my documentation. Let me try to help you, George, here. Uh, the contracts included in here, most of the work is for operating budget. But sometimes when we have small capital projects, they are done under this contract. The number that we have out of the $1.4 million that we have spent to date, uh, about 700000 is spent on capital, 695000 to be exact. So we try to do some capital projects when they are small in nature, and the larger capital projects are bid. Our bid, okay. As part of other work, I imagine. That's Mr. true. Yes, that's true. Okay. Four members, other questions? Okay. Hearing none. The next item, JBO 707-18. Doors, interior, and exterior. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of interior and exterior doors for schools and offices. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $200,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $400,000 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in December 2017. Ms. Hen, I have a question for Mr. George. Yes, Mr. McMillian. Mr. Saris, please refresh me. Why would there only be one company awarded this contract? Is it is it because very few have gone through the process? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, let me check my data here. I would just think well in this is, in this case we just got one we we uh, 14 uh, companies asked for the uh, the bid package and in this case we only got the one response and maybe mr. Dixit uh, has some information about his experience with that no I do not have any additional information uh, we had only one bidder. I don't know why. But we are satisfied with the performance of the bidder, if that helps. So 14 different companies, which seems reasonable to me, requested the packet. They go through the packet, and only one of them followed through with a bid. That's correct. Thank you. So these are operating expenses. Are, are we talking about the replacement of doors versus these aren't for new construction because those would be these, capital budget expenses? Are, these are for what replacement, type of replacement of doors. Are we talking about? 
talking about replacement of interior door and exterior door. Some of this uh, work was done to safety, safe to meet the safety requirements. Okay. Following inspections? That's Did true. Did this be in response to an inspection finding? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Ms. Rowe, did you have any questions? Are you good? No, I'm good. Okay, um, thank you. This is George Saris again. I can also add from looking at the, um, the bid tabulation that we received that uh, this also includes um, sliding overhead doors that, uh, that we use in a lot of our maintenance facilities as well as uh, standard schoolhouse uh, schoolroom doors. So, Mr. George, uh, that contributes to a question. I know the North Point bus lot has a couple extremely large doors, garage doors. Would that include something like this? They were trying to modify those doors so they allowed access for the buses inside of that that complex? Um, let's see here. Nothing on this tab sheet looks like it would be that large. Uh, Thank you. Sure. Okay. I think we're ready to move to the next item. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Pete, do you want to do the next one? Sure. Thank you, George. Uh, next four items are for roof replacement. I'll go one by one, but just to give mm -hmm. general information, these four roof rep replacement projects were part of the capital program that board has already approved, and these projects have been funded on the local side of the capital improvement program. With that, the first contract you have is ARA-210-20 is for Chase Elementary School roof replacement. It is old roof, which is uh, more than 24, 25 years old. It's 46,160 square foot. And we received five bidders. The lowest bidder is Detweiler Roofing Company. This roofing company has done work for us before and has satisfactory performance. So we are requesting award of this contractor to Detweiler. Okay. Any questions, board members? Mr. Pete, I've, I've got a question. You might not be able to answer it, but I know coal roofing does a lot of roofs for us, and their, their bid was close to $900,000 higher than Detweiler. It would seem that they would be would be better at submitting a bid that would be more competitive than that. Well, all I can say that coal has bid before. They have done bidding this time. They have done a lot of work for us. They are quality contractor. But these bids, you know, different time, depending on the market condition and need of each of the contractors, how hungry they are different contractors bid low at different times. So this is the market economy. Any any bidder can be a low bidder at any given time. Thank you. Any question? Can I move on to the next one? Ms. Rao? Um, okay. Uh, the Ms. next Rao, are you... I... Okay. No, I'm fine. Okay, thank you. May I? Yes, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Okay. The next item, 10, is contract JLE-601-20 for Logan, Logan Elementary School roof. Uh, it is an old roof, uh, 1996. The square foot is 66,309. And we had a good number of bids for this. We had seven bidders. And the lowest bidder, again, 
is Deckweiler. So we are requesting the award of contract to Deckweiler. Okay, questions? Hearing none, next item, please. Item 11 is JLE 609-20. It's roof replacement for Reisterstown Elementary School. Reisterstown Elementary School has an old roof. Uh, it is uh, 1996 and it's 39,527 square feet. We had several bidders again. Um, six bids, and the lowest bidder is Petusen Roofing Company, and we are requesting award to Petusen Roofing Company. Questions? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Item 12 is JBO 719-20. It's roof replacing for Sparks Elementary School. Uh, Sparks has two parts, old part and a new addition. This roof replacement, which is uh, 62,000 square foot, is for the old roof from 1998 building. And we had five bidders. Detweiler is the lowest bidder. So we are requesting award the contract to Death Wall. Thank you. Board members, questions? No, oh, thanks. Okay. Hearing none, and the last item, please. The last item, 13, is JBO 718 20. This is an emergency generator replacement for Randallstown High School. It is one of the uh, aging school projects. And we have five bidders. The lowest bidder is uh, Key Systems. The work will include replacing emergency generator and also replacing associated electrical equipment, which includes automatic transfer switch, transformer, electrical panels, and feeders. The generator is more than 50 years old, so they need a new generator. Okay. Questions for members? Oh, thanks. Okay. Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Thank you. Board members, do I have a motion to recommend items 1 through 13 to the full board for approval? Please say so your moved. name before responding. Lily Rose, so moved. May I have a second? Rod McMillian. May I have a roll call vote? Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. The motion carries. Is there any further business? Hearing none, since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.